I think Neeraj, we are on time and we can start now. Start time. So, good morning, good evening, and namaste to all the attendees. I'm Devain Singh, your host for today's webinar and founder of Responsive Team. And as a quick introduction, as a quick introduction, Responsive B is. Uh, just give me a second, some issue. Sorry. So I'm Devain Singh, your host for today's webinar and founder of Responsive B. As a quick introduction, Responsive B is an agile consulting firm and Save Gold SPCT partner. Please visit our website www.responsivebee.com to know more about our services. A very warm welcome to this webinar on Safe 6.0. There has been a lot of excitement and buzz around Safe new version, which has come with a lot of new additions. And in today's session, we will very briefly cover how this new addition are going to impact the organization and we as change agents. And then we'll open the floor for Q&A. I request all the attendees to please add your questions to Q&A and we'll try to answer as many as possible. Though our speaker for today, Neeraj Bachani, does not need any introduction, but we'll add few words here. Neeraj is an SPCT and had led more than 15 transformation in different domains and industry. He has trained more than 500 professionals on various agile frameworks, including Scrum, Kanban, SAFE, value stream and portfolio management. With this, I invite Neeraj to take the session forward. Over to you, Neeraj. Thank you, uh, Devinder. Thank you, Responsive B, for uh, again uh, hosting a webinar. Uh, this is in continuation with the previous webinar that we had on uh, 6.0, uh, which obviously got a lot of uh, you know inquisitive queries, a lot of uh, excitement. And that's why, you know, this is the second webinar that we have in this series uh, to help our participants really understand, you know, why this need for this new version and what are those elements of change uh, that have been brought in Safe 6.0. Uh, just to make uh, everybody uh, understand the purpose of this webinar, uh, what we are going to do is to uh, run this webinar in uh, different parts, which means, you know, first I will go through very quickly about the changes that we had done in the previous uh, webinar. I'll pause for some questions, and then I'll talk about the remaining changes that we were not able to cover in the previous webinar because of the time box uh, that we had kept. And then, you know, again, we will open up the floor for any kind of questions that you all might have. Uh, also, the purpose of Explore is that you can go back and look at the website, scalagileframework.com, uh, look at our website, responsivebay.com. We have introduced a new page called Safe 6.0. Uh, and of course, go back, uh, maybe reconsider doing some kind of a training. Uh, you want to have some kind of a consulting support from us. So we are always available and open for that. So that's how you would grow as agile coaches, as leaders. Uh, so moving forward, uh, taking this uh, webinar forward, uh, let me first uh, quickly talk about uh, the changes that SAFE is bringing in, uh, right from 2011 till this point, 2023, uh, we have seen SAFE uh, bringing in multiple changes in their versions. And all these changes are obviously based on the various implementation these organizations have done and the kind of feedback SAFE has received from people, from leaders, from agile coaches, from change agents like us. And here we are in uh, version 6.0, uh, launched uh, just very recently in March. And the prior version was, say, 5.0, which was launched uh, in December 2019. Now, the very first question that might come to your mind is, why this transition from 5.0 to 6.0? What was the real need for the entire framework to undergo such a major change? And uh, let me step back uh, a while into the previous version 5.0, uh, where very first time the concept of business agility was introduced. And as we all know, the concept of business agility means that the entire organization and not just a part of it is responsive enough to any kind of change uh, that happens in the market, any kind of effect the competition brings in or maybe trying to help their customers 
uh, in terms of the latest trends that are happening. But business agility definitely means you have to respond faster than your competition. Now, what has changed in 6.0 is that while the concept of business agility was understood, this version is trying to solidify, this, trying, this version is trying to strengthen the concepts of business agility across the organization. And that also means it's extending the concept of business agility to various parts of the organization. And we will talk very quickly uh, about the various changes that have been brought in. So for example, accelerating flow, accelerating value flow. Uh, we will talk about uh, you know, the uh, clarification in roles and responsibilities. Uh, we will also talk about OKRs and how does that help the organization. And eventually the changes you would see in the big picture, how do they all contribute to extension and strengthening of business agility in the entire organization? Right, and and you would uh, believe uh, now, you know, based on the trends that we are looking at, that the organizations have really moved forward uh, from the concept of just introducing agile and scrum at the team level to bringing in agility at the organization level. Right, and that is where again, you know, these six themes that have been brought in Safe 6.0. Uh, in the previous webinar, uh, we had discussed. Uh, fortunately, we had Joe Valone. Uh, from scale agile also coming in uh, you know we had discussed these four uh, you know changes out there we spoke about strengthening the foundation of business agility and then you know extending business agility across the various parts in the organization the business uh, then we spoke about accelerating value flow and then uh, you know joe uh, also mentioned about uh, how do you have better outcomes with measure and grow and okrs uh, remember, the word metrics has now been replaced by measure and grow, and uh, OKR has been introduced, uh, although it was always being talked about uh, whenever we spoke about scale agile implementation across the enterprise. So what I'm going to do, I'm quickly like a breeze go through these changes uh, without uh, going into depths, without re-emphasizing. Uh, our request is to please visit our page responsivebcom safe 6.0 and look at the webinar to get better and deeper insights of what we had discussed about these changes. So uh, the very first change that we spoke about was strengthening the foundation of business agility, uh, which means uh, the concept of a business agility value stream has now been introduced and that is now staying on the top of the scale agile framework uh, because uh, simply put, the BAVS, you know, the abbreviation of um, uh, this uh, value stream, uh, simply defines the steps that are needed to go from sensing an opportunity to delivering a digitally enabled solution. And uh, as an example, very quickly, for example, if there is a, a mission critical uh, system that needs to be built, uh, that requires a change in strategy, that requires executives involvement, uh, maybe also the product management jumping into create an MVP, uh, understanding the need of the customer, maybe using design thinking, delivering MVP, till the point they really understand whether the hypothesis has been met or not, together would constitute as a business agility value stream. right? And again, as per the definition of value stream, it requires all functions, processes, activities, teams, and events right from the concept to cash or idea to product realization, right? So which means uh, some of the changes that you would see uh, coming in at the foundation level because it's strengthening the foundation of business agility is that, you know, the continuous learning competency has been brought down into the foundation because it is really needed uh, for the organization to have such a culture where people continuously learn and uh, the SPC icon is also redesigned that I will quickly talk about in the uh, upcoming slides as well. But the other change that has been introduced is to revise uh, some of the terminologies that are used in the safe implementation roadmap, uh, which means you know the tipping point goes away as most of the organizations are still uh, or have started to use at least some form of agility and none of them are probably being uh, are using the traditional waterfall method. And then certain changes of terminology, for example, there is leading uh, in the digital age for the leaders. Uh, then we have organized around value. 
and later on uh, we are talking about enhancing the portfolio which was earlier termed as extending to the portfolio so this is some change uh, that has happened at the roadmap level uh, there are other changes also that have been brought in so please refer to those changes while i quickly move on to the next change uh, that is about accelerating value flow and uh, what safe has really brought in this time is that uh, understanding that wherever there are work items, obviously there is going to be some flow and flow occurs whenever there is some smooth, linear and fast movement of a work product throughout the steps in the value stream. Which means what SAFE is also emphasizing is that any flow has these kind of eight properties and if there are these properties, to accelerate value flow, you will have to have these flow accelerators, which means, you know, uh, all these flow accelerators were already somewhere present in the framework in the previous versions. But now in this version, SAFE has highlighted to come back and say, look at your flow, look at those eight properties and look at how these flow accelerators can really, really accelerate flow inside your system. Because now we really understand that if there is no flow inside the system, it's obviously going to be the weakest link in the chain. And that is where at all levels, uh, you can see SAFE has highlighted flows, not that you know flows were not there earlier, but now highlighting it obviously means the people that are responsible for value delivery at each of those levels should make sure they understand those eight properties of flow and obviously help accelerate flow at their own levels. And when each part does its best, obviously the entire system gets optimized. And that's another way to say that we are achieving the state of business agility inside the organization, right? And also the leaders cannot be left behind. The leaders also definitely need to put their skin in the game which means the concept of value stream management, please keep in mind, this is not the concept of value stream identification or value stream mapping. Value stream management out here means that the leaders need to get involved to make sure, sorry, to make sure that the value right from the concept to a realization uh, of that concept flows through the system uninterruptedly. And it is the leaders that have to provide that support, that kind of environment, and make sure impediments are taken care. And that is why the concept of value stream management, which has been introduced at the portfolio level, is to make sure leaders definitely do this. Right. The next change that we spoke about was uh, accelerating uh, or enhancing the business agility in the various parts of the organization. Uh, which means, you know, not only just the technology, not just the business, together uh, these patterns were introduced to make sure both business and technology have an alignment to make sure business agility is achieved in the entire organization. Which means the concept or the pattern uh, that was introduced is uh, business enabled arts, which means, you know, business people that are full-fledgedly uh, involved in the execution uh, of the Agile release train. And then we have the Agile business train where, uh, you know, a business solution works like an entire Agile release train. Uh, then there is a Agile executive team, which means the team itself works like an Agile team, make sure it's deliver delivering value uh, iteratively and incrementally. Agile business functions, which means the lean agile practices for streamlining your business operations. And finally, combined portfolios, uh, which represents a change in most of the organizations where development value streams and operational value streams sometimes need to be managed collectively. And that is where the concept of the combined portfolio has been introduced. Right. And the last change that we spoke about. Uh, in the previous webinar was also to have better outcomes with measure and grow and OKRs, right? And as I mentioned very briefly earlier, the concept or the terminology of metrics has now given way to measure and grow, right? And the measure and grow has uh, basically been built around three domains, 
uh, which means we look at you know how good are we in the outcomes that we are producing in the time box uh, how is our flow inside the organization is it really efficient or do we really need to make changes and improvements around it and the competency which talks about how proficient is the organization in using the practices towards business agility and of course you know as any organization extends business agility into the various parts of the organization they will start realizing the shortcomings or as i mentioned chinks in the armor to know where are the improvement areas required for the entire organization to achieve the state of business agility right and uh, we also did speak about uh, you know three primary uh, key use cases for applying okrs these are available on the uh, website as well so you know the number one uh, okr application was around the strategic themes uh, then we spoke about using it uh, at the epic level uh, to understand are we really achieving those epics or not and then towards the transformation itself uh, becoming one of the case studies for application of okr and understanding whether this journey is moving in the right direction or not so these were the four changes that were introduced uh, discussed in the last webinar uh, what i am going to do is i am going to take a small pause out here just to see if there are any questions that can be possibly around these four changes and then we can briefly answer and move forward so devinda do we have any questions coming in yeah neeraj we have couple of them uh, in the q and a section so i'll read them in the priority they came in so uh, though you have talked about business agility but there is a question which says that why uh, so much of importance being given to business agility nowadays so if you can just share some more thoughts on this sure sure yes yeah, so so definitely so like i said you know uh, when agile and scrum first came in uh they were pretty popular they were pretty uh, you know attractive uh, because organizations really saw teams at development level uh, were using some kind of uh, best practices that is helping them achieve predictability built in quality and of course the team motivation was also there but now like i said you know uh, 20 years later uh, agile and scrum and kanban have now become the a uh, necessary ingredients for any kind of organization not just software development and the organization is now looking at certain ways in which the entire organization can reap the benefits the principles the practices that we have been discussing so far around agile and scrum how can the entire organization benefit around it and that's why the emphasis has now suddenly moved from team level best practices to organization level best practices so that the entire organization can respond to any change and not just one team or our uh, you know a part of the organization so i think that's one of the reasons why business agility is gaining so much traction uh, there in the thanks for that neeraj and our second question is related to business agility value stream it says when and how to implement business agility value stream who are the members of uh, business agility value stream yes yes so just like i briefly mentioned see business agility value stream uh, looks like a new concept in safe 6.0 but believe me the concept of value stream was introduced uh, 20 25 years back just that the organizations do not pick up the concept of value stream or some organizations are still not using it uh, but the emphasis on business agility value stream is that not just people involved in development should be there uh you know involved uh, wholeheartedly but also the management and maybe the business support uh, the other parts of the organization for example your purchase your compliances uh, your procurements they also need to step in to make sure value is delivered pretty fast right uh, a very simple example can be you order uh, some kind of an electronic item uh, you know the sales and and the people who are facing the customer are excellent and you are really impressed but once the order is made it's taking too much time to get delivered to your home right and the business support is equally not responding to any kind of support that you need now you carry a bad impression about the organization because one part of sales did very well very quick but the other parts of the organization are not responsive 
right? So to remove those kind of discrepancies in the system, the BAVS, the business agility value stream, has now started to become the core of this version. Then. Okay. Thanks, Neeraj. Uh, I'll take one more question from here. Yeah. It says that flow has always been part of SAFE with Kanban at various levels. So what has changed related to flow in 6.0 and how will it help organizations? Yes, yes. Uh, good question, uh, You know, Like I mentioned, you know, flow was always connected to overall outcomes and predictabilities. But what was happening was Kanban was just assumed uh, to be equal to flow. But in this version, as you can very clearly see, this version is saying any flow inside the system has eight unique properties that we briefly uh, mentioned in the very first slide about accelerating flow. And they have recommendations for accelerating flow also inside, inside the system, inside the organization. And that is where the emphasis that each level, especially the leaders at that level, make sure the flow is uninterrupted, uninhibited, and it's helping deliver value to the customer in the shortest sustainable lead time. And that's why, you know, flow has been given importance in, uh, in this version. But still, if you see the larger picture is that flow is helping organizations achieve the state of business agility. Great. Uh, super questions. Uh, please keep pouring your questions. They are, they are very interesting questions. Uh, while I move on to the next set of changes uh, that we had not covered in our previous webinar, and uh, the very interesting change that has been brought in is, you know, empowering teams and clarifying responsibilities. Now, uh, I'm sure, you know, you guys must have seen, uh, sometimes even applied for any kind of position uh, which are typically called as a very interesting JD that has been published by an organization. Uh, you can see, you know, the very first one says, we need a scrum master who's an expert in Python, AI, Oracle, and maybe all sorts of technologies, and also is able to write user stories very well, right? Or maybe, you know, the concept of iteration manager uh, who would probably work along with a lead scrum master and then would be reporting to a senior scrum master uh, or maybe an RT who's uh, uh, being asked to take end-to-end -end, uh, delivery, accountability, and responsibility, and also create project plans. And, you know, sometimes I see uh, product managers uh, being asked to have expertise in coding, you know, and also be working on agile architecture as well. Uh, now, people who have really worked in agile for so many years, even in SAFE for so many years, would definitely get some kind of a confusion or a chaos in mind that how does these terminal logies that have been defined by organization really gel well with the understanding, with the learning that we have had over these number of years, which means one of the important part that is definitely required for any organization is to make sure that they really uh, help their people understand the role and the responsibilities very clearly. Why this is important is because remember, one of the ways uh, you can deliver better quality with your outcomes is to make sure people really understand the kind of work they are supposed to do. Otherwise, this would often lead to conflicts between people, their roles especially, sometimes you know, shrugging their responsibilities. And at the end, the value of that outcome is the one that suffers. So that is why you would see a change that has happened in this version is that, you know, SAFE, first of all, has tried to highlight the key responsibilities of every role to make sure they understand what is needed for the success of that role. And the second thing that they have also done is made sure that instead of a list, it's shown like a cartwheel because visual representation always creates a better impact rather than just a list. And that is the reason uh, why uh, the SPCs who were earlier known as safe program consultants are now being called as safe practice consultants because somewhere the word program gets related to the project and project is just a temporary endeavor with a fixed start and an end date. And it just represents a container of work. Whereas product is something that delivers value to the customer 
forever whenever there is need for that value right so uh, spcs again not just uh, you know the ones that are uh, making sure practices are being followed they also accelerate business agility across the organizations they help people embody that lean agile mindset which is very very crucial in the transformation journey because unless people do not understand why lean and agile and their principles and practices are needed they cannot possibly come out with the ways of working another important uh, responsibility lies with the spcs now is to make sure that they always lead the change because not only the management but people are also looking up to the spcs to make sure they show the way and uh, implementing safe the new roadmap that we saw is definitely one of the responsibilities of uh, the spcs but very interesting change that has now been brought in is that spcs also have to help coach flow to the right level of people and uh, make them help uh, improvise their flows at those levels so these are some key responsibility areas that has been introduced uh, for uh, the spcs uh and similarly we have something for the agile release train which is shown uh, again like a cartwheel uh, representing you know what are the various responsibilities to make sure the entire art is successful and you can see these uh, you know have been represented uh, in this graphical uh, the other interesting change that has been introduced uh, is to replace the word scrum master by scrum master slash team coach now uh, th this has caused some kind of a confusion uh, but believe me uh, uh, no confusion at all because uh, safe believes that any team that is working at the core cannot just be a scrum team sometimes it is a kanban team as well sometimes it's a combination of scrum and kanban and that is where the scrum master will definitely play the role if it's scrum otherwise that is assumed to be a team coach because the responsibilities of a scrum master are like a coach at the team level and that's why you know it is written scrum master slash team coach based on you know the kind of practices that you have at the team level pick the right uh, title and you know the the person should be playing that role accordingly the other change that has been brought in in terms of uh, the roles and responsibilities definitely is that the four content authority roles uh, the product manager uh, the solution management and correspondingly the technical part you know the system architect and the solution architect how are they collaborating with the other roles towards the success of those outcomes so for example uh, you can see you know the product management to steer the art has to collaborate very strongly very tightly uh, with the rt and the architect both similarly to align on the outcomes the product management definitely definitely needs the customer but also needs solution management and business owners to make sure the art is going in the right direction at least on the outcomes and similarly for evolving the solution the product owners are going to be the part of the product management team along with the product manager to make sure the value has been correctly identified prioritized delivered tested and it satisfies the need of the customer so that is why bringing such a visual representation helps the role identify first of all what are the key responsibilities that i need to take as that role and second who do i need to collaborate on different areas in the system to make sure everybody is helping deliver value to the customer in the right way and in the fastest possible time so that's why this change of representation will definitely help roles understand their responsibilities better and of course like i said build quality in which otherwise may hinder the flow inside your system so you would appreciate how these are all connected you know how roles and responsibilities is connected to flow which is further connected to business agility and it's how stitched in together in this framework and uh, earlier i mentioned you know very briefly uh, that uh, you know the word uh, program has given way uh, to some new terminology that is more product related so for example 
the very common program backlog that we had in the previous versions has now become art backlog. Similarly, the program board, a very popular dependency board that we create in the PI planning has now become the art planning board and so on and so forth. And like I mentioned earlier, the safe program consultant would be now called a safe practice consultant. Uh, also at the solution level, uh, you would see the solution architect slash engineer uh, has now become solution architect. The solution backlog is now called the solution train backlog because it more represents at a larger solution level, how does the backlog operate? And similarly, the other changes at the large solution level have now been revised to call as a different terminology. Why this is equally important is that not only within the organization, people are using a common terminology, but when they even interact with experts and people outside their organization, there is uh, no confusion, no chaos in the minds. And they definitely uh, are talking about the same thing. There is alignment. A very common example I'm sure you guys would know is uh, how epic features and stories are very different in Jira versus, you know, what we really have in the agile and the safe world and, you know, how it causes a lot of chaos. Because every time I talk to a person who has worked in Jira, feature is above the epic and then, you know, epic follows, epic is being followed by a story that changes the entire order. That's why these terminologies are so important in this version. Uh, again, when we talk about people, uh, certifications cannot be left behind, uh, which means uh, you will see uh, immediately uh, the six certifications that are shown on the left side, uh, leading safe, implementing safe, POPM, Scrum Master, Portfolio Management, and Safer Teams are immediately upgraded to safe 6.0 with all these changes reflected. But the remaining ones, which are more towards the advanced side, so for example, release train engineer, advanced scrum master, DevOps, architect, and agile product management would be released in Q2, which is April 2003, somewhere around the mid or towards the end of April 2023. But uh, two more certifications, the safe for government and agile software engineering, uh, scale agile has no plans yet to upgrade it to 6.0. And uh, there's no official confirmation coming in yet. Uh, why 6.0 certification is so important? Uh, because then people can learn about these changes. They can look at the terminologies and they can better use these changes in their organizations as early as possible. So recommendation is to get certified in the latest version if you are planning to do so. And again, uh, with the new version, they have also uh, change the way your renewals are supposed to be done, which means the safe foundational membership is now $195, uh, which covers any or all of these certifications, you know, safe agilist, safe practitioner, scrum master, uh, safe for government, DevOps, POPM, it's all bundled, just pay $195 and you can renew all. Or if you have taken any advanced certification, uh, pay $295 and again, you cover all the advanced certifications plus also the foundational certifications. Uh, for SPCs, uh, SPCTs, uh, the certification now stands at $995, which obviously like an umbrella covers both foundational as well as the advanced membership as well. Right, so these are the changes that have been brought in in terms of people, in terms of roles, in terms of responsibilities, and of course, from the certification and renewals as well. Uh, Devendra, I'll again pause here for a few seconds, few minutes to see if there are any questions around these changes so that we can answer them as we go along. Sure, Neeraj. So uh, we have a follow-up question on business agility value stream. It says that how business agility value stream is different from operational value stream? Yes. So, so remember, you know, uh, the operational value stream, uh, if you remember uh, in the previous versions, was always defined outside the scale agile framework, which covers the customer and the steps the customer and the organization together take to achieve value. So, for example, you know, if there is a loan, uh, that a customer needs and the customer approaches a bank, uh, what are the various steps 
the customer and the bank stake together to achieve value you know the customer might apply for a loan and then you know there is uh, origination of all the details capturing and then you know underwriting then the loan is given etc etc this is operational value stream which is outside the scale agile framework but once you come inside the scale agile framework like we said the very first step that is there at the top is to look at the business agility value stream and like i mentioned earlier maybe the management needs to get involved maybe people from different parts of the organization need to get involved and they might build a system to help the operational value stream for that bank or that financial institution and at the at the level down below below the uh, business agility value stream you would have maybe one or maybe multiple development value streams so to answer briefly operational value streams outside the the framework uh, obviously with the customer and the end user the business agility value stream at the very top of the portfolio and then as you come down deeper inside the organization inside the system you might have one or more development value streams which create solutions for the business agility value stream so that's my answer there and for that yeah news that uh, clarifies much uh, the second question is related to okr okay uh, question is how to link organizational okr to sprint execution i think it's a very valid question very valid question and a very interesting question now people who have been uh, practicing safe or even any kind of transformations for the organizations uh, would always feel that you know although at the art level there are pi objectives which are the goals that the art is trying to meet every pi uh, when you further break them down the teams have their own iteration goals defined which means the team is trying to achieve those goals at as part of every iteration but at the top there were always something missing uh, and okrs were starting to gain popularity because okrs are again at the portfolio level how does an a portfolio or an organization define its own goals and that is where the concept of uh, objectives and key results was introduced which means the portfolio or the organization can know in this quarter or maybe two quarters or the entire year what are the market goals the customer goals the competition beating goals that we are trying to achieve now will be used as part of the okr please also keep in mind that okrs can be further broken down to value stream kpis which means each value stream has identified its key performance indicator be it you know uh, improving the net promoter score or the customer satisfaction or increasing you know the shareholder wealth whatever be the kpi okrs and kpis then translate into pi objectives and pi objectives are further broken down into iteration goals as previously mentioned so i think this structure creates a very beautiful alignment and that is also one of the core values of safe to make sure all the people all the levels are aligned and okr i think has now uh, you know uh, uh, fixed up has you know brought in that missing piece which was you know not there at the at the highest level at the portfolio level i believe so i think that completes the entire picture that way there is correct so uh, neeraj our uh, next question is related to scrum master role Sure. So it says that Scrum Master is limited to team. So can you share some examples where Scrum Master can contribute to art improvement outside the team perspective? Definitely. See, definitely. See, one of the reasons, uh, you know, why uh, the Scrum Master in Safe is not exactly the Scrum Master in a, a single agile team is that you know while in a single agile team the Scrum Master is merely focused on the improvement of the team. but out here the scrum master is not only interacting with other scrum master he is also interacting with the release train engineer who supposedly the chief scrum master and going beyond that as well the scrum master can possibly go and interact with any other role inside the framework there is no restriction for the scrum master so for example you know based on the uh, retrospective of a team the scrum master may go and recommend usage of automation or ai tools probably which is now one of the current buzz or trends 
to an architect and say, hey, Mr. Architect, uh, my team is looking forward to have some kind of an automation. Can we bring in uh, AI or automation at the art level? Right? Or maybe Mr. Business Owner, uh, my team is looking at using chat GPT. Do we have an approval for using such tools for improvement of all the teams, including my team? So that's where the Scrum Master in SAFE definitely needs to break those barriers which are there for the team and go beyond the team to look at holistic improvement of the art. And that's how it differs from a single team Scrum Master role, Devendra, in SAFE. Hope that answers to some extent. Yeah, sure, Nidhi. That answers very well. So, uh, yeah. the next question is not very much related to the topic, but it's very relevant. It says that I am new to SAFE. Can you help to differentiate role of SPC and RT? Because they Great. both are called as coaches at the definitely. program. Definitely, definitely. See, remember, uh, you know, the uh, the responsibility of uh, SPC, the safe practice consultant that we spoke about, is to make sure safe is implemented in the entire organization. He's like a consultant, a coach, a trainer, a mentor to make sure everybody understands and embraces the concept of lean and agile. Whereas, you know, look at the role of an RTE. The RTE is a facilitator and making sure the value, the outcomes, the efficiencies achieved at the art level. He is not bothered probably about the entire organization's implementation, yet he is still connected to other roles in the organization. But the focus for the art is only for that art for that matter. Whereas the focus for the SPC is definitely not restricted to just one art or just one value stream. Maybe it is the management. Maybe it is other part of the organization where we need to introduce agility. Maybe it's also about, uh, you know, helping uh, a particular team that is not doing so well, you know, coaching them, training them, like I said, mentoring them. So the focus is entirely different. And uh, typically the RT is also like a program manager at the art level, making sure deliveries and outcomes are being achieved. So I think that's the difference between RT and SPC. Dendra. Yeah, thanks. Thank you, Neeraj, for that. So, uh, Neeraj, we'll hold with the questions right now. Yeah. And you know, if there's yeah. more to cover, let's do that and then we can yes. come back to the questions. Definitely. So, my last part, uh, again, you know, uh, this is something which has been very uh, interestingly introduced uh, is, uh, you know, what we uh, lean agile agents, what we SPCs and SPCTs are calling it as ABCD. Right. So A stands for AI, B stands for big data, C stands for cloud, and D stands for DevOps, although DevOps was already introduced in 4.5. Right. But why are we bringing in all these three together? Uh, is that, you know, uh, AI, uh, first of all, is a very interesting technological advancement that can possibly be applied at any level. And uh, what is the whole purpose? You know, you want to uh, bring in automation, you want to bring in customer insights. Uh, that's why, you know, AI is becoming such a crucial uh, tool, crucial technology for any organization because it's helping them deliver faster, innovative products at a much better quality. That's why, you know, AI is now being given the due respect that it should have got maybe a couple of versions ago. Uh, similarly, big data, uh, you know, we know all know how big data helps provide some great insights to the organization, especially the leaders, so that they can take the right decision at the right time, right? And that's where, you know, big data is going to play an important role because data is there, but it doesn't make sense unless there are certain insights achieved out of it, right? And cloud, uh, again, you know, cloud was already starting to get, uh, you know, the uh, required respect because nowadays none of the organizations actually host their environments. They rather outsource it to some cloud provider because it actually saves cost. It helps them uh, create environments beautifully, quickly uh, replicated like a production environment. And, you know, a lot of times these cloud providers also uh, provide additional support in terms of, uh, you know, giving them a performance testing, load testing kind of uh, functionalities, which really helps any organization 
to create products that do not fail in production environment. And that's why, you know, the usage of cloud uh, has started to become so important. Uh, which means, you know, uh, very quickly, I will not go into depths. There are articles that have been published. Uh, and although these are some uh, very early changes that have been brought in, but SAFE uh, feels, you know, these are going to be some promising technological advancements that every organization will definitely use. And it has to be a part of the process because SAFE is bringing in not just process changes, but also technology changes. So this is where, you know, AI, uh, like it has been mentioned, you know, brings you the competitive advancement, better business results, so on and so forth. And uh, similarly, you know, the big data, uh, because, you know, data is now everywhere. Uh, it's maybe getting bigger and bigger. Uh, so, you know, big data is one of the usage areas that every organization needs to focus on. Uh, one example that I remember, uh, you know, we had started to do in one of the organizations was uh, looking at the data of the user stories, uh, we were trying to gauge whether teams are becoming closer to predictability or not. Which means if a team is saying, hey, my, my story is three story pointer, is it really getting done in a duration which is in alignment with other three story pointers? So it's trying to gauge, you know, how people are putting in the data and how do you extract that data to see is it meaningful, is it giving some insights or not? And uh, finally, you know, like I said, cloud, uh, everything is going to cloud. Nothing uh, is probably, you know, going to be hosted unless it's a secure environment. So, you know, the cloud really helps organizations deliver much better quality at a lower cost. And of course, you know, 100% of time uh, connectivity is not being an issue. All these are some of the prerequisites for the uh, cloud to succeed in any organization. Okay, so this was the technological changes. Uh, you might see more changes coming in in the subsequent versions as well, right? And uh, apart from this, uh, Devendra, uh, some changes that have been brought uh, at a maybe a cosmetic level. Uh, you would see, you know, the safe backlogs have changed uh, in terms of terminology. Uh, there is a spanning palette change that has been brought in. Uh, enterprise solution delivery has gone some minor changes. And like I mentioned earlier, terminology has has made changes uh, in the in the in the framework, right? So uh, again, Kanban. Uh, we speak about flow. We speak about those properties of flow and the accelerators. And Kanban is a very beautiful system, a very easy yet effective system to manage that flow, right? But remember, Kanban is not equal to flow. Uh, people generally assume you have Kanban, flow is taken care. Of. That's actually a myth that SAFE is trying to break out here is that Kanban can be used for flow management, but make sure you look at those properties and accelerators to have in uh, uninhibited flow inside the system. And uh, the connection of all these backlogs with the help of Kanban was already there uh, in the previous versions. Again, you know, it has been highlighted in six. Uh, spanning palette, uh, which you can possibly uh, use as a configurable a list of uh, items at any level, any configuration uh, also has been, uh, you know, brought in some changes. You see OKRs coming in, a uh, roadmap is there. AI has been introduced in the spanning pilot, which means you can use AI at any level. And finally, like I said, uh, metrics uh, gave way to measure and grow. That was one change that was introduced. Uh, the large solution or what we call as the enterprise solution also has gone some minor changes. Uh, if you remember, you know, the word uh, pre-planning uh, was used in the previous versions uh, and it used to cause a lot of confusion because pre-planning would mean the kind of planning required before the PI planning, right? But whereas, you know, it actually means uh, you have an event called a pre-plan in, in safe 6.0 where all the agile release trains under uh, a solution train come together and try and uh, get alignment on the objectives they are trying to achieve in this in this PA. So that's the event uh, which is called as uh, you know the pre-plan and the post planning is now called as coordinate and deliver. right which means you know how do the arts come together, how do they integrate, how do they need to, uh, demonstrate their progress is all going to become part of coordinate and deliver. 
that's the change that has been brought in right and a very interesting change and this is probably going to be the last one for today as well uh, is the usage of the word called sync at all level right uh, you know the word uh, daily stand up was popularized by safe although scrum calls it as a daily scrum if you all know uh, but uh, we all know during covid times uh, sitting at home you possibly cannot do a daily stand up right so that's where the term daily stand up has now been called as uh, team uh, sync uh, and similarly you know the other events in safe uh, if you know the po sync the art sync there's an architecture sync and a portfolio sync also uh, is better suited to be used because sync means everybody coming together uh, for an alignment for a coordination and it's not a status reporting meeting right so again you know we spoke about uh, scrum master being called as a scrum master slash team coach use it based on the agile team configuration that you have a uh, lean system and solution engineering has now simply become lean system engineering you know uh, it it applies at this solution level we all know that and scrum xp uh, because it was causing confusion that xp definitely has to be used uh, is now called as safe scrum uh, because scrum in safe works a little differently than scrum in isolation that's where you know these terminologies are really helping uh, to get better clarity to everyone in this version thing okay so uh, again i try to cover all the changes uh thank you for uh, reaching out to us uh, before i take up the questions um, you know let me also tell you uh, we are there uh, whenever you need to talk to us you, you need to send us an email you have queries uh, you want to set up a quick sync call with us uh, for 30 minutes all all available uh, on our website uh, you can reach out to these numbers emails we are there for you so so don't feel you know we are just here to teach you and then run away uh, we are going to be there as a as a lifetime value partner whenever you need us uh, we would be there and participants uh, organizations that are already engaged with us know this the best that you know how we as responsive we uh, work for you guys and you know are always there whenever you need us thank you um for the questions uh, if there are any sure. there yeah, Neeraj, we have a couple of them. Yeah. So the first question is, why is big data only restricted at portfolio level, though it is eventually feeding measure and grow aspect? True. See, remember, uh, you know, uh, in this version, you know, what we are saying is uh, the big data has been introduced at the portfolio level because, you know, look at the portfolio. Uh, it's typically a collection like an umbrella for everything that is happening out there. And that's where you know the data is so huge for the portfolio that it better makes sense to use big data at that level for now. But believe me, you know, as uh, agile really strains and large solutions and teams grow, which we know in the future you are going to create large, complex, big systems. Uh, I think the big data is going to trickle down uh, possibly at all levels. Right now, it doesn't make sense to have big data only at at team level or only at the art level the data might not suffice which is needed for the quantity to you know have those insights at the big data level so i think that's my opinion on the big data for now uh the so neither so uh before moving to the next question which i think you know is a very beautiful question so i'll just hold it for a second yeah uh, if anybody wants to ask a live question please raise your hand we will take it up we still have a couple of minutes with us. So we can take one or two live question before we close the session for today. Okay. Okay. We have one question in Q and a, uh, so by the time, you know, people are framing their question, yes, what will be the future of scrum master? Uh, well, uh, it's the same uh, question, you know, what is going to be the future of uh, cricket coaches and hockey coaches and soccer coaches? I think that's the same answer I would provide for a scrum master. Uh, remember, you know, the scrum master role always starts uh, with helping the teams reach to a point where they have become self-organized. 
right? That, that's what the real a sense of a scrum master role is. But then it doesn't stop there. The scrum master encourages the entire team to now start looking at practices or, you know, some kind of new technological advancements so that they can raise their own bar, right? So uh, again, come back to sports. Uh, do you feel any time any cricket team doesn't need a coach, even if they are winning all the matches, all the tournaments, they still need a coach because somewhere somebody's experience will definitely help them raise their bar or bring in new set of practices, which possibly they might not be aware about. So I think till the time teams are going to stay, agile teams are anyway long lived, till the time the teams are going to stay, there is going to be a need for Scrum Master. The only question that possibly should come in the mind is now what kind of different practices the Scrum Master should bring in. Should he talk only about uh, Scrum? Should he only talk about uh, Kanban? Should he then bring in uh, extreme programming or engineering practices? What beyond that? Can he think about bringing in Lean? Can he think about bringing in some practice that the entire team doesn't know? That's what the job of a Scrum Master should be. Right? So I think my answer is forever. Great, Neeraj. Thanks for that perspective. Thanks a lot. So uh, I'll just go with one last question. And I think it's a very beautiful question. It will help to summarize the complete session. Thanks for asking. Uh, what is the short and long-term impact of the changes on organization with the arrival of 6.0? Uh, great, great question. Uh, I don't know whether somebody has actually read my mind uh, because I was thinking of doing another round of webinar uh, on talking about, you know, what is going to be the short and long-term impact of this change. But uh, let me summarize, you know, what I have in my mind right now. Uh, see, the short-term impact definitely is going to be number one. Because of the change in terminology, people have to start learning this new terminology. And it might take some time, you know, people still call uh, PI as a program increment, whereas it has now become a planning interval. Uh, and, uh, you know, the program word is gone away. So one is definitely the change in terminology. Uh, look at the other changes that are going to be there as a short term impact. So, for example, organizations now might have to go back and say uh, or think, are our flows optimized? If yes, are we really achieving the state of business agility or not? And second, uh, is all part of the organization uh, in a state of business agility or do we need to introduce agility maybe in HR, maybe in marketing, maybe in legal, maybe in finance, right? So all these changes are indicating to any organization, are you growing in business agility? Because three years back, business agility was introduced. Are you really moving in that direction? Because other organizations have started to take the lead. So I think that is going to be the short term uh, impact, uh, Devendra, for this change. Uh, the long-term impact definitely, like I mentioned uh, a few slides back, is uh, how are we going to use technology to make better informed decisions? You know, we have just introduced AI, we have just introduced big data. How are we going to leverage these technological changes in the organization? And again, you know, if the entire organization is has achieved the state of business agility, are our matrices, our measure and grow, so, you know, uh, reflecting the right kind of uh, improvements in that direction. So I think that's going to be the long term impact uh, where, you know, uh, the organization will have to somewhere look at, uh, like I said, how do we raise our own bar? But immediately as a short term impact, I can see these changes happening in the organizations because nobody wants to be left behind. Uh, in in you know the implementation of these changes that have come in safe six zero two. Yeah, thank you, Neeraj. So uh, yes. we have one live question. So I will yes. enable the attendee for that. Yeah. Yes. Yes, please. Yeah, Kalevani, can you please ask your question? You have to unmute yourself. Kala, you have to unmute yourself. I have given permission to uh, speak. 
so by the time you know uh, we have kala with us there is one more question yeah. uh, if one is certified in popm and say 5.0 do we need to do 6.0 foundation or one can get renewal with payment for foundation level 6.0 yeah so i think this has been confusion uh, with a lot of people uh, see renewal and upgradation are two different things right which means you know first of all uh, if you have already renewed your safe 5.0 and you want to upgrade uh, there is a 20 co quiz questions for 45 minutes kind of a thing you will have to get 100% in that quiz and then you will be upgraded to safe 6.0 right now if you do not have your renewal you will first have to renew and then you can upgrade because otherwise, you know, SAFE will not allow you to upgrade to SAFE 6.0 if you do not have an active certification. So, so recommendation is to please renew yourself first and then upgrade. Uh, otherwise, you know, you cannot just straight away upgrade without an active certification. Uh, that's what uh, you know, the SAFE recommends. Thanks, Neeraj, that answer. So, uh, Kali, uh, if you still have any doubts and you want to ask, please unmute yourself or else we are on the top of the hour and uh, we'll be closing this session. Okay. okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Please go ahead. Um, I was about to say, if you have any questions, you can mail us and we are there to answer your queries as well. Sure. So uh, with this, uh, thank you, Neeraj. Thanks a lot. And all the attendees for such interesting discussion. It has definitely added to my understanding on SAFE 6.0 and helped me to build a better perspective of concepts. And I'm sure same experience for all the attendees have been. I request all the attendees to please visit our SAFE Upgrade page. And if you have any further questions or you need any discussion, as Neeraj just said, please connect with us. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your uh, weekend as well. And uh, uh, happy 6.0 learning for safe. Thank you.